Reese's is named after its inventor, Harry Burnett, H.B. Reese. He created his first delicious cup in 1928, but before he came up with the idea of making candy, he had to work a long list of jobs to feed his 16 children. Yes, that's right, 16. Harry's path to success was never a straight one, and he had to overcome many obstacles along the way. This is the story of Harry Burnett Reese and his world-famous peanut butter cups. In 1879, a young Harry Burnett Reese was born. He is of Welsh and English descent and grew up on a farm in Pennsylvania. Harry was an only child and wanted to help his parents in any way he could. When it came to making money, he knew how to be creative. He started farming at an early age, but soon began looking for more lucrative sources of income. He started milking cows as a way to make some quick money and even built frog ponds that he sold to restaurants in his area. After a childhood filled with entrepreneurial activity, Harry married in 1900. At that time, he was 21 years of age and it did not take long for his small family to grow. The couple had a total of 16 children, eight daughters and eight sons. Naturally, Harry soon found himself struggling to support his growing family. It helped that Harry's wife came from a wealthy family, but Harry was always a true family man. Not only did his mother live with him all her life, but so did her two sisters. As you can imagine, the house was always full and a typical Reese family dinner would have had at least 20 of his family members in attendance. When friends and relatives were invited, the number grew to over 40. As comfortable as it was, Harry needed more money. To support his large family, Harry was forced to take on all sorts of odd jobs, from managing the fisheries at his father-in-law's cannery to running a dairy farm and working in a factory. There was nothing Harry wouldn't do to support his growing family, but it wasn't enough, and the family continued to struggle. And in 1916, Harry read a job ad in the newspaper. Milton Hershey was looking for someone to manage his many dairy farms in the Hershey, Pennsylvania area. As you have probably guessed, Milton is none other than the founder of the famous Hershey's family of chocolates. Harry didn't realize it at the time, but taking this job would change his life forever. After he worked for Hershey for a year, Harry was asked to manage a dairy farm he called the Round Barn. It was an experimental farm and his boss, Milton Hershey, came to check on him every two weeks. The farm was using a new milking machine, which was much more efficient than hand milking, but also more expensive. In 1919, Milton decided to close everything down. It's not entirely clear whether Harry quit his job or was fired, but one thing we do know is that he decided to take a new approach this time. Rather than relying on others for work, he took matters into his own hands and started a new business. He called it r and Candy Company and made almonds and raisins coated in milk chocolate, then sold them to local stores. Harry knew he needed high-quality manufacturing equipment to increase his company's potential. A year later, he changed the name to the Superior Chocolate and Confectionery Company and began issuing stock to raise capital. Amazingly, he raised today's equivalent of $290,000. However, unfortunately for Harry, the business ultimately failed. Now 40 years old, Harry was feeling hopeless as he was under pressure to support a large number of children and was expecting yet another baby. After his early candy business failed, Harry took a job at a paper mill. He then started his second job as a butcher and his third job canning vegetables. To say he was busy would be an understatement. But in 1921, he received great news from his wealthy father-in-law. He had bought a house for Harry's growing family. Will things finally get better now that he can keep a roof over his family's head? Harry quitted his three jobs and returned to work for Hershey. He started working in the shipping department and was quickly promoted to foreman. However, money was still tight and he decided to work part-time on the side. After his previous chocolate project failed, Harry wanted to try again and started making various confectionery products in his basement. He made hard candy chocolate-covered nuts and raisins, mints, and two other candies that he invented. He always made sure to use fresh ingredients and covered all of his creations with Hershey's chocolate. After a few years, Harry's business was doing much better than he expected, but he was still working out of his basement while his candy became more popular and demand continued to grow. 
With this success, Harry took business more seriously and founded the H.B. Rees Candy Company. Although his company had been doing well for many years, it still lacked blockbuster products and had poor profits. But one day in 1928, everything changed. He went on a business trip to Harrisburg five years after Harry founded the company. There, he spoke to a store owner who told him he was having trouble keeping his chocolate-covered peanut butter candies in stock. The store owner's suppliers couldn't keep up with demand, and the candy disappeared from shelves faster than it could be replenished. In order to continue meeting the needs of his customers, the man asked Harry if he could help. Harry didn't have to think twice about it, and agreed without hesitation. He left the store and immediately bought a giant 50-pound can of peanut butter. He rushed home and began experimenting with coating peanut butter balls in chocolate. Although this creation was delicious, it was difficult to make, and the balls were almost impossible to produce on a large scale. After some thought, Harry had a better idea. What if we used a traditional cup instead of a bowl? At this point, chocolate-covered peanut butter cups had already been around for a while. These were already on sale in 1907, but for some reason, they were not very popular. Until then, they were just one of the many candies sold at stores, but that was all about to change. To make the best peanut butter cup in town, Harry started making his own peanut butter. What made his cup so delicious was the special way the peanuts were roasted until they were almost burnt. Harry simply called his cup the peanut butter cup or penny cup because they were sold for just one penny each. They were an instant hit, with people loving the salty yet sweet treats. Shortly after, Harry sold his £5 boxes to local retailers, and by 1935, business was doing so well that he had paid off all his debts and quit his factory job working for Hershey. Encouraged by his success, Harry felt ready to strike out on his own to make a living producing candy. He was finally able to fully concentrate on his business. The company continued to operate successfully for many years, but then World War II occurred, and severe supply shortages and economic difficulties occurred. When the United States entered the war, sugar was rationed and his former boss Milton Hershey gave Harry sugar, but it wasn't enough. In a last-ditch attempt to save his business, Harry removed all of his other products and focused solely on peanut butter cups. It was his most popular product and also the candy with the least amount of sugar. It would turn out to be the best decision he ever made. As Harry's business boomed, other candy companies began making their own cups. Despite the competition, the popularity of Harry's candies continued to grow and Harry continued to enjoy his success. In fact, things went so well that he decided to build a huge factory in Hershey. The building was completed in 1957, but unfortunately, Harry was not able to see it with his own eyes. He died of a heart attack a few months before, days before his 77th birthday. Harry's death threw the company into chaos. He excluded his daughters from his will, leaving the company to his six remaining sons instead. These sons did not get along very well. While Harry's children fought for control, the company eventually entered the modern era with automated production lines. By the late 1950s, Reese's had become a respected national brand. Sales grew to more than $15 million a year, but the brothers continued to disagree. The eldest brothers wanted to sell the company, but the younger brothers wanted to keep the company in the family. One day, Hershey heard a rumor that it might be available for resale and immediately contacted him. After all, a merger made sense. Both companies were located in the same city, used the same chocolate, and the founders were good friends. After seven years of arguments and fights, Harry's sons sell his family business to Hershey. The sale gave the sons approximately 5% ownership of the Hershey company and received 666,000 shares of Hershey stock, valued at approximately $24 million at the time. This equates to over $200 million today. Considering Hershey's current value is over $20 billion, we can only hope that his sons passed on that valuable stock to their children. By 1969, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups were Hershey's best-selling product, selling more than 300 million cups a year. After hearing the iconic words, Hey, you got peanut butter on my chocolate? advertising campaign in the early 1970s, Reese's Cup was no longer only Hershey's top product, but also the best-selling candy in the United States. Today, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups are still enjoyed by millions of people each year. 
The Tasty Cup remains popular with Hershey's, with dozens of variations created over the years. If you go to any US supermarket, you'll find Reese's products everywhere, from big cups, miniatures, and minis to dark chocolate, white chocolate, marshmallow, caramel, and hazelnut cream flavors. Or how about Reese's cookies, Reese's pieces, or Reese's puff cereal? The Reese's brand may be big, but Reese's peanut butter cups are still number one, and many people outside of America love them too. Perhaps this is exactly what HB envisioned his company to become. After all, he once wisely said, if you make a product that appeals to both the young and the old, your potential customers are limited only by the population of the earth. This was the story of Harry Burnett Reese and his delicious peanut butter cups. This smart entrepreneur was determined to support a large family and did everything he could to make ends meet. In doing so, he ultimately created an impressive and delicious legacy that continues to this day. Reese's peanut butter cups were handmade in Harry's basement nearly a century ago and are now sold around the world, but the essence of the original cup remains. If you have a company you'd like to see featured next, please let us know by sharing in the comments. Don't forget to check out our channel for more inspirational business videos.